Hey guys, if you'd like to see what I make with this awesome digital collection, please keep watching. Hey guys, and welcome to another awesome video for the Crafters Castle Challenge blog. Please check out the description box for all information. Hey guys, so today I'm using this awesome digital collection from TaylorMade Cards for you and we're going to make an explosion box for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go through what you need first of all. You need a large piece for your base. I'm using a 12 by 12 sheet. This is going to be whatever colour you like. Mine is black. It is 12 by 12 and then you can see on each side you need to score at 4 inches and 8 inches. Turn it 90 degrees score at four inches and eight inches again so you do the two turn it 90 degrees score the same way again and you leave yourself with a three by three grid the second layer i'm going to do i'm doing in this red color and this piece is nine by nine you could do it at ten by ten could do it eight by eight it's totally up to you i did nine by nine and then i've scored along each side at three and six so much the same way I put it in my scoreboard scored at three inches scored at six inches turned it 90 degrees scored at three inches again and six inches again you're then also going to need a lid so my lid for our explosion box is this piece this piece is six and a quarter by six and a quarter and then score at one inch on each side there is also another lid that I will show you later on that I added in as I made the project. Okie dokie, so first thing we're going to do, divide our corner cubes, our corner squares in half. These are four by four. So I have cut myself a template. I'm going to fold it in half. So I just scored it down the middle and then folded it in half. And we're going to create a heart template. So I'm going to fold this in half and then I'm just going to draw my heart shape onto it, cut it out, bingo you have a template i did this three times and did not like the shape of my heart if you're more confident drawer than me then you do that i didn't like the shape of my heart i then went and found my dies and so i had a layering dice hit that would fit so with the largest one i cut out one i then used that as a template to draw around all four corner pieces so that we've got this nice heart shape and then i used my layering dies to create layers for them so once you've drawn on your hearts on all four corners, you're going to cut them out. So you're just going to cut around the edges and through the sort of the middle M to give it the heart shape on all four corners. And then when your box opens, you get these really, really nice heart shaped corners rather than just blank space. So once I have cut them all out, you can start to see there the shapes that you get. <laughs> so I've cut them out. Now we're going to fold the hearts. So the hearts are going to fold inwards. So I'm going to fold the sides. I'm going to score down the heart first, down that center line that we drew. I'm just going to score down that on my scoreboard just to make it easier to fold. Because having a score line there will mean that you're not going to score it wonky. Fold it wonky, sorry. Then I'm going to fold the straight lines first. So I'm going to fold all four straight lines first so we get our box shape and then I'm going to fold our hearts into the middle of the box so as you can see there I'm folding the heart in making it a mountain fold I'm going to fold it by hand and then I'm just going to bend it down and score it with a tool on either side so as you can see I'm folding it flat scoring it one side scoring it the other side now our middle layer this time I am folding the four sides first and then we're going to remove the corner squares this time. Rather than turning them into a heart, this time we're just cutting them off, removing them and the score line. So then your centrepiece will sit in the middle like so. For our lid, for each of the little squares we're going to cut it off and notch it. So I'm cutting straight down and then cutting each of those tiny little squares into a corner into a corner into a notch so you can see the shape there then we're going to score all the lines and we're going to stick our lid together and all you're doing is those little squares that we cut down and notched they're going to stick behind one of the rectangular panels 
and then I had some clips so I'm just going to clip mine while the glue dries. This glue dries really quickly but it's just easier to have a clip on there for me so I know it's going to stay um, while I glue the others. Little tips like this just make it much easier because it's like you've got an extra pair of hands or an extra two pair of hands. So I'm going to let that dry and then we will decorate everything. So I've cut these square panels in grey that I've put on the sides and then we've got our hearts. So I die cut layers and I'm just using my ruler here to bend the hearts along the centre nice and easily without having to score them. So you could use your scoreboard, I'm just pushing them up against a ruler like so, so they can be stuck on. And then I'm going to glue one half, fold it in, stick it down. Once one half is stuck, lift the other side up and stick it down as well. That means that these will not open completely flat and that is how I want it. If you want them to open flat, I would suggest lie it flat before you stick these on. So I'm going to do all the red the same and then the black as well, exactly the same technique. So I now have a layered black, red, black heart. Like so. Then I'm going to carry on with my decorating. Once I have decorated the large and the small, I'm going to stick them together. Pop glue on the middle of the small square and just stick it in the centre of the larger one. So at this point I realised I wanted a lid for the small box. So this lid is four and a quarter by four and a quarter and you score it at one all the way round as well. <clears throat> I am showing you here with a smaller one because I did cut it too small the first time. Um, I hadn't added on enough for both. I did get a visit from my kitten again. She does love coming in. I'm making this box lid the same way as I made the large one. The little corner squares we're going to cut into and notch them so they're slightly less than a square and then stick it behind one of the rectangles. Exactly the same technique. And you can see there I'm just going to put it on top of her. <laughs> you can see where I've notched. She was very very affectionate today. So once that lid is done it will fit on the small box so then it secures that. And as I was about to try and explain my uh, decorating to you I got another visit from Madam. And she was very, very affectionate today. So what I thought I would do was I would bring her a little bit closer to the camera so you can see her gorgeous little face and her very sharp claws. <laughs> she does love the attention from you all. Hey guys, we are back with our finished piece. I'm so loving this. So on the top, I did a little red design. <clears throat> Layered the same clock printed at three and a half and two and a half. And a sentiment panel. I used matte enamel dots for the corners and then a shiny black one on the time. Show you the sides. Each side has one of the three and a half inch, three and three quarter inch clocks on. And then we lift the lid off. Lift the lid off. Our box pops open and you can see our first layers. <clears throat> Four clocks, I'll just push it down so you can see the clocks easily. Four clocks with the hearts, and then we take the second lid, and the small box up, pops open as well. Now, this central box is three by three, so you can put anything in there that is less than that. So, I could put this large pot of embossing powder in if this was for a crafty friend, for example. That fits in there nicely, it will give you a bit of weight, so you'd need to carry from underneath. But it's not too heavy, you could put chocolates in, you could put anything in. Um, so let me take that back out. I love this set, I'm going to get so much use out of this set with these clocks. And the sentiments are so pretty. So pretty. So you've got... <clears throat> Time has a wonderful way of showing us what really matters. Time is measured, is not measured by clocks, but by moments. How true this year. Time spent with the family is worth every second, undoubtedly. And then time stands still when I'm with you, which I thought was just a lovely sentiment. I did decorate the inside of each lid as well, just to use more of those beautiful clocks because I love them. <laughs> um, yeah, I absolutely adore this. I just... These clocks are stunning. So, 
as I said at the beginning, if you head over to the Crafters Castle Challenge blog, the link is in the bottom in my description box, you will find all the information you need. The rest of the design team is in my description box as well, so please look through all of their videos. I love this set, I really do. It's so much use. And they're really detailed as well. So I did print some extras that I didn't use, that I had cut out because I wasn't sure how many I was going to use. So, I mean, just the detail on them is gorgeous. Save this one for the lid and I just think with the flowers in the middle, so pretty. Butterfly one, I love the butterfly. The almost, uh, not a clock, but a calendar with all the star signs and things in. I mean, they're just beautiful. So yeah, um, I love this set. Thank you very much, Taylor Made Cards for you for producing such a lovely set. Please, please, please head over to the Crafters Castle Challenge blog, add your own entry, check out all the others, get some inspiration. And yeah, I mean, I love this. I don't actually think I want to gift it to anyone. I think I want to keep it on display somewhere. I'm wondering if I can hang this up. Hmm. <laughs> Planning. <laughs> I might give it to the other half and then hang it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much for spending time with me today, guys. Keep crafting and I'll see you all soon. Bye.